Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video in modeling analysis and design of reinforced concrete building using Autodesk Robot. In this video we're going to continue our efforts in modeling the structural elements of that building. Of course one of our major questions that I wanted to ask was the basement wall and the fact that a elevator wall seems to double down as a basement wall where I was surprised that this is a basement and that those exist in the basement with having even i think uh, some windows without any walls so i was surprised about that so i might be modeling this today also i seem to have forgotten one of my columns here and i want to give a shout out to our dear subscriber who actually brought this to my attention whose comment is going to be shown on the screen so thank you very much with that being said well let's dive into it so sit back relax and enjoy the show Okay, so first things first, I want to quickly modify the DXF file I was using. The reason why I haven't seen the column here is because it seems it was drawn as a circle, and it seems Robert is not good in dealing with circles and the DXF DWG background. So what I will be doing is basically while applying two lines like this, saving the file, and I think, yeah, see, and now of course Robot happily detects something has changed and wants to update. Yes, please update which it does, and now I have this little crosshairs ready for me. And well, this brings us to the drawing of that column. So how do I draw that thing? Go to my columns here, select the reinforced concrete column of round 400, and click on the column I forgot, and I think, let me just check which one it was. Yeah, I think this is the one. And in case you're wondering and willing, and you want, for example, to catch up what we're doing here, this is a part of a video series about modeling analysis and design of reinforced concrete buildings using robot. So if you want to see that, there is a playlist I will link on top right. So check out that one. Of course, this is incorrect now. I have to edit, edit, move, and copy, and move this upwards 7 meters, so 007. I'll execute this, so now it's... I think I copied it, so I delete the original one. And now I think I'm doing great. In case you're wondering why there are two columns very close to each other, I said before that there will be a structural um, joint. Um, with that being said, I was talking about the enigma that is the basement walls. So, of course, now there is no... Uh, when we draw basement walls, I'm not going to use walls here, because walls will immediately enable or tell robot that we are dealing with shear walls. And shear walls, the design paradigm of shear walls is different than the design paradigm of basement walls. The design paradigm of shear walls is basically that it resists uh, moments from horizontal forces perpendicular to its strong axis, whereas uh, the paradigm of basement walls is that it resists horizontal forces uh, perpendicular to the surface of the wall. Now, if, if I want to do a uh, basement wall, I need to deal with it, with it in floors or shelves. So I would select a thickness based on that, but there is a problem before I do anything. If I select, for example, shell and try to draw something non-horizontal, I, I need to catch four points. As far as I know, I only see two points, I need four. So to do this, I'm going to once again go to File, Import, and import me a DXF background. I'll import the same columns, but this time I will put it at the level of negative seven, because I want to have two backgrounds now. The posi position is negative seven. Of course, if you're wondering how we did that, please check out previous videos. I'll say OK, and now I have two backgrounds. I cannot see, I can only see one. So since I don't see the other, I just go here and select visibility to be always or unlimited. And now I see them. I need those two backgrounds because when I draw my wall, I need to grab the top and bottom places of that wall. The problem with that being is there's a problem with snap. So if it works now, I'm happy. If it doesn't work, I need to improvise again. So I'll try deal with it in snap. So let me check if I can snap those points. And as expected, I was unable to snap. That's the reason why I had only one background on top. So this seems to be mission failed. I will basically delete this thing. So I click on this and hit the delete button. So now I deleted my background. And I need to go to plan two. Plan B is I will have to open my structural axis and access that thing myself. To access points, you need to, now of course, you can click anywhere and it will immediately add a structural axis for that point. So I think I need an X here. I'm just very quickly doing that. Okay. Now, I'm just clicking those points. I just remembered, uh, I don't exactly ex remember how this one looks here, so... Okay, I think I know now. It seems that I have to do a lot of things for this, so I'll quickly do copy this. 
the the issue I have here with this is that the entire structure is not basement wall or basement walled, although it is supposed to be underground. So what I will be doing is I will be trying to draw uh, lines using cyan in the places of the basement wall. So let's take a look. He is taking a basement wall of thickness 20 or something. Let me just check very quickly. Yeah, 20. So he is not doing the basement wall for the entire structure, so I have to jump in. I click L and well basically draw me a basement wall continuation, which is gonna be rotated on the entire structure like this. Okay, now I will basically go to filter. Hit the enter key and filter everything that has a color cyan. So I'll just select color and select me the color cyan. Okay, I'll add this to the list. Wait, what? I will add this to the list, exactly. I'll apply and select. So now it's going to select everything that is being drawn in cyan, which is something I try to draw the basement wall with. Okay, fantastic. This is the ed Those are the edges of my building. Now, since he's saying his basement wall is 20 centimeters, I will offset this and I will select the distance to be, well, 0.2. And now I have to offset all those lines. So this inside, this inside, and so on. Everything is going to be offset inside. Now, once again, I want to say that I am doing this while I'm in the dark. Like, I had no idea that this issue would happen during the modeling phase, during the preparation phase. But, well, when you model, you see those issues and you deal with them as they are supposed to be dealt with. I click the trim now and trim that stuff. So this is a typical day of a junior engineer. Of course, here the junior engineer is doing all the work and then the senior engineer is basically unhappy as usual, telling him that he should do more. True story. So I think I've done everything right. Now if I copy this and paste it on top of the basement wall or move it and paste it here, it should be just fine. I think we are doing great. Yep, so okay. Now I will save that again and rely on robot sensor telling me that something has changed. So I'll just close that, no. And robot has seen it. So if I say yes, now it should be updated. Exactly, now I have the basement wall. Great, I'm still unhappy that the basement wall and the elevator wall seem to be shared. I need to think about this later, if this is possible or not. I'm inclined to saying yes, that's possible, but I want to check out the practical implementations and the practical considerations for that before I just blurt out words. Because, I told you, uh, the point of this channel is not to make me sound smart. The point of the channel is to make you smarter. So, that's something I need to consider. I'm clicking all the points to get the x-axis here. So if I apply now, I should be seeing the axes here. I think we captured them correctly. If I go to top, let's take a look. I captured almost all the axes correctly. Let me see. Yeah, I think everything checks out, I think. Okay, I think the x-axis check out. Now I have to go to my y-axis. Yeah, I think we're doing good. If I apply that now, let's check if everything got um, the correct axis. I'm checking all those corner points, and I think, yeah, I think we're doing great. Okay, this turns out to be more than I thought. I thought that this entire thing would just need five minutes. Well, no, it does take more. Okay, so uh, horizontal slab again, um, thickness 200. I don't trust that, so I click on the three dots to check that. So 200, material for later. I can choose material conquer just to be a, a quote independent. It doesn't matter. I can change the materials later. There's no parameters of elastic foundation. So yeah, okay, fine. I select that. No horizontal slab. And now let's get clicking. So that's going to be really interesting. How can I do that? Um, okay, I want the x-axis to be in the horizontal perimeter of the structure. So I need to be careful where I click and what I click. This is going to be interesting. Okay, it's axis number five. So I see the point, so I just stop here. That's my first line. From here to here. And then I go down to here. I cannot, I can't even snap to that point. 
This is annoying. Okay, I just I just resort to this. Control C, Control V, and change this to seven. This is this is really annoying. Like I don't know. Please tell me if you have the same problem. I'll add this. Okay, I'm just doing it manual now. That's my only option. And it's really annoying that I cannot just touch that. Let me click here. Take this and put this to be seven and add. And now close it. Okay, I have my first basement wall, I guess. Is this a bug in Autodesk Robot? I'll just deal with it. Okay, so I click here. I have to resort to like some painful stuff here. So I click here and click this point. And then to click here, copy and put here seven, which means down. And then click the first point and put here seven. And add that, which means I have finished this wall. It's going to be really cool. I hope you're following me with this. And now the same thing here, the basement from here to here. I still have problems. I'm not out of the woods yet. I click here. Now for the first point, no, for the second point, I go down to seven. And for the first point, I go down to seven. And then I close up the wall. Okay. Oh my, that was an interesting piece of uh, modeling. Now, um, there are multiple issues I need to address. First of all, the and I will do this next time. First of all, the column here. The column here is, in reality, almost part of the basement wall. But in modeling, at the moment, the wall doesn't see the column, the column doesn't see the wall. There is no interaction between them. You can have interaction, or you cannot have interaction, based in, on the fact if you want to connect column to the basement wall or not. But here at the moment, the column is on its own and the basement wall is on its own. Now, what you could do, and I might do this next time, is to take the column and shift it towards the basement wall so that the column line here intersects with the basement wall, which means that there is some force interaction between them. Even this, you can shift, like for example, look, I can take this, like this, and move it from here to here. Just put it into the wall. If you do this, then the wall and the column interact and they feel each other. Uh, let me just quickly do here a pin because I think we're going to do... See, I'm unable to select that. What is this? I'm unable to... I'm unable to select that thing. I think if I put here edge or something, would it work? You know what? I want to quickly do this. So, one, two, three. Four. There we go. Okay, 73 edge two. So, if I write 73 edge two. Okay, I have it. 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 Okay, now I'm pretty sure the editor is not going to show that, or maybe he showed this very quickly. This was just me learning on the fly, a learning session to understand what we're doing here. So, um, this is what, what's this? This is, um, this is 61. So I select here, 61. Edge 3. Should be working. Yeah, there we go. Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, what's this? Yeah. <laughs> oh my, the tricks I have to do. Okay, at least this for now reaches a milestone, our modeling efforts for the structure in which we model the basement wall of the basement, basically. And of course, in the next videos, we're going to just continue from here. So stay tuned for more videos. And with that being said, I want to give a huge basement wall sized shout out to our dear channel members in the contributor and the helper level, whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as their support of the channel is priceless to me and, help and enables me to continue pushing those videos on time and in the quality I am hoping to achieve. With that being said, I hope that you enjoyed the video and that you found it beneficial. Of course, if you have enjoyed the video, then like, share, comment and subscribe as a sacrifice for the algorithm and share, especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. 
As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.